average value per worker hour that is produced in the U.S. economy. It's up 3% up year over year for the most recent quarter. That's not bad, but it ain't 3x. And so we need to think about what's the gap here. Workers are probably getting a lot of benefits from using ChatGPT on the side, but they don't have a lot of incentive to share what they're doing or how they're doing it with their bosses. Um, they're, they're enjoying that extra time. So, you know, a lot of interesting questions there. But if we sort of refocus a little bit on on the data readiness for AI and self-service, um, I would love to hear from both of you, maybe starting with Pablo, where do you see the biggest tic- disconnect between business expectations of AI and the current state of data? Uh, you know, looking at architectures in particular. Yeah, I mean, I think we're, we're very early, so the expectations are very high. And I... I I like to think of this a little bit uh, as as a replay of something I, I saw and experienced myself a few years ago when machine learning became kind of a big practice and a lot yeah. of companies just uh, hired a couple of data scientists that just knew how to do machine learning, threw them into the data they had and expected 20% uh, revenue gains. Because, oh, you're, you're going to find all these things, all these patterns that we haven't figured out. And then the, they, I, I, I had friends that were into this frenzy and they were hired as like, oh, it was just brought there and they didn't really tell me what to do. Just like, here but you have these tools and these computers. And it's like, what do I search for? I don't know. And uh, so it was, you know, the technologies are different, the problems are different, but I feel there is mm-hmm. a little bit of that expectation that uh, there is going to be magic at play. And um, I think we're seeing a little bit of that repeat. We, we need to mature the practices. I think at, at the end of the day, I, I fully agree with, with Samir, like the, the, the practice and like how the responsibility models and things like that evolve to adapt to these things uh, that's what really is going to drive like that increase in company productivity i would be a little skeptical of the 3x productivity gain for the individual i don't know who came up with that figure as a person that like works with ai and things like that i i don't know i'm a little skeptical on that and and also, I, I should uh, probably clarify. I, I will, don't mean to interrupt. <laughs> I should probably clarify that the number that Ethan's citing, and I don't remember his exact source, was for give it for a set of tasks. It wasn't necessarily that, that individual that could, suddenly could be. I think there's tasks, there's tasks where you might get to that, but also like that kind of. If you're a, an expert, if you're a subject matter expert or an expert on a particular tool, I think there is little productivity to be gained. Uh, there is some tedious tasks that you have probably already automated in some way or fashion. And there is a risk on like that 3x might happen to a newbie on a new activity that you are not that, that expert. But then can you get to the level of expertise that you would have gotten otherwise? I've seen some debates on, on these things of how AI can condition learning to get to that level of expertise anyway that's a little off topic in terms of like uh, working with data but i think it's showing the immaturity of this practice and how like we haven't really figured out these things yet we haven't figured out how this is going to affect uh, building teams building responsibility matrices in the long run so to answer your question i think there is a lot of unknown and we haven't yet seen like the the effects of this i Definitely will be skeptical on seeing 3x productivity gains at the corporate level. Maybe individual tasks for individual people, but uh, not not getting there. And I, I think the the biggest change I expect it's bringing and this kind of trying to bring the answer a little bit more into into the data space and connecting with Samir's comment in the process. I think the role of like uh, subject matter experts in the different lines of business. Uh, to bring their expertise into the governance of the process, into the documentation and the data literacy and things like that, uh, it's going to be a critical factor in moving the needle towards higher productivity. Because the more autonom- uh, the, the, the more autonomy you have, the better your and I'm abusing maybe the word documentation here. Documentation as part of like how the process works, how what what's the meaning of things. Something that now is like, oh, just go talk to like Chris in the second floor. He knows how that works. You cannot do that with an agent. And, you know, agents don't report to people in the same way as people report to people. So bringing that expertise uh, into a more mature process and uh, formalizing things that before were a little wishy-washy, I think it's going to be the next 
big step in terms of organizational change, especially working with data to increase that revenue. But again, skeptical on the 3x. <laughs> I have a slightly different view of this because I'm looking at this question as a as a the sort of you know that that disconnect between business expectations of AI and as you said, sort of where we are with the current state of data architecture. I think there's two. Well, the the, the, the highlight for me is. And this is what I see with a lot of our clients is most are expecting AI ready outcomes already when actually they've got their internal estate, their architecture is, is, is reporting optimized. So there's a complete disconnect between those two things. And then, so you have this business expectation of, well, I want to leverage Gen AI. It might be agents. It might be other things. You know, I want to see that transformative uh, impact. Uh, I want to see those gains. Um, but they're also assuming one thing: that the data is readily available. It's good quality, and it's in you know it's structured in the way that they want it to be clean enough for these advanced models. Yeah. Yeah. And then on the flip side, you've got this: the reality of data architectures, which is. As I said, it's it's very much that historical descriptive type of reporting. So if we go, if I just take you know an example of one of my clients that are looking at their estate, they're more batch oriented. It's siloed still. You know, there's a there's a lack of near real time or or high granularity of data. You know that or, or governed data streams. So I think there's there's those challenges, and I think that's going to have an impact on that reliable performance for AI. So those are the disconnects that I'm seeing. Yeah. And I and and it's you know, it's the practical things around that because we we all want, you know, to 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 drive AI and do AI, but before that there's a lot that we've got to get done. Yeah. The, so the, the data stuff. foundation, the, the the process foundations, yeah. the, the, the architecture foundation, there's yeah. a lot of things that need to evolve. Yeah. And if you ask uh, for oranges to an apple tree, well, you get apples, not oranges. So yeah, I think we. I, I think you're right, and I think it's it's down to us, sort of saying, look, you can get your foundations in order, but you don't have to spend two years on doing that. You can do this, these things in parallel, and chip away at things and uh, an experiment. And I and I and the whole idea of AI and the way that we should be transforming our organizations is more to that experimentation and then production. Uh, we're, we're building very quickly and failing very quickly and then trying to work out well, where, where did it fit into the process? As you said, Pablo, how are we going to actually adapt our business models? I think those are the, the sorts of things that we should be thinking about as, as, as businesses and organizations as they dwell on this idea that suddenly, like Moderna, is going to have agents reporting to agents and a, you know, an overflow of, of, of sort of mini robots in a way. Um, you know, so it, it's kind of interesting how it's going to come out. And I think the human is going to be impacted hugely um, because of these challenges. Very true. And um, just to underscore the point, um, I, the biggest disconnects we see are um, a lack of clean data, uh, the, the fact that just data is very distributed, and then the fact that humans aren't trained to consume it or handle AI well. And so... Two of those in particular, the lack of clean data and highly distributed data, are interesting. If your business would like to be featured in a future event, contact us today.